Okay, hello, hello, buju buju. Hey, okay, so I sort of was. Oh, look at that bright spot. I had promised to uh, do a final video of the finish, Carla's finished guitar. There it is. So I'm going to do a quick rundown on the guitar. And uh, maybe I'll play it. It's a little short scale for me, and I have rather large hands. I'm stumbling through it, but it's sounding pretty good. I don't know if you can hear how good it's going to sound with this mic, but... Yeah, it's sounding good. Yeah, okay, so let's flip it and give you a wee tour. Yeah, wee tour. Okay, so we're going to start the, at the uh, lower bout, as they call it. Let's see now. Ooh, it's pretty shiny. You can see it's reflect like that's fingers reflecting in, in it so it's pretty good um yeah it's french polish um oh i had i've put in an 18 hole bridge which i usually do or always do really um and at this time i did it a little differently so that the strings are kind of an interesting angle do you know what I mean? Nor normally i would put them all at one angle but this this is the first time i've done one where the lower string loops through and <laughs> no words today <laughs> anyway you can see I made a nice cute little pattern and let's see you can see how it goes in there that's all right you can see where the strings are hey and if Carla's watching this you can see how the strings go in so the strings go in the lower part of the bridge loop around and they come in uh, the lower hole Ugh, lower see lower start using words it gets difficult the hole closest to the soundboard, the string goes through and then loops around and then up through the slightly higher one and then it comes around and just hooks in right there, like so. And the treble ones have a little, ooh, focus, focus. See, they're black, it's a little bit hard to see. But the, the, I do it like a double loop there, so, because the treble ones tend to stretch it, or slip it a bit easier. Yeah, it's a flamenco. So can we see the the golpe plate right here? You can see the transition there. Because um, in flamenco, you tap, tap the guitar quite a lot. And here's the the um, rosette that Carla wanted me to use. I have about twelve right now, and they're they're all a little bit different, you know. That's how I how I'm doing them these days. Or any days, all days, <laughs> and uh, got my label in. I do a hand handwritten label on my instruments if I put a label at all. Um, like a lot of times on the chorus, I won't even put a label in, or the shamisen even too. Here's my headstock pattern. So this is this pattern is something that I use all the time, and that's almost more, I would say, more of an indication of of the maker, you know. It's like a little bit of a calling card. Yep. Um, I'm actually going to send it to Carla with two bridge sizes, you know, because it, it's a shorter scale and I've got normal strings on it. So the, the strings, like the lower strings, sort of wobble back and forth a little bit more, I think. So the, on, the, on the lower bridge, um, lower saddle, sorry, it, you know, playing down here was sort of, you could hear it buzz a little bit. So anyway, I have this, I put a slightly higher bridge in. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> slightly higher, higher saddle. I'm getting all my terms mixed up. And um, so the action's a touch higher than I might normally do. The action right now is like three and a half over the bass string. Normally I'd go three, three and a quarter. So it's really minimal actually. And it's playing really nicely, I think. And uh, so I th it's not a problem for me, but I'm setting the lower bridge with the thought that perhaps Carla might want to try some harder, like some strings with a higher tension, right? In which case, the lower bridge might, the lower saddle la, 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 might work better. Anyway, it's still quite low. And the, the, the uh, bridge, the actual bridge is made of Paul Faro. Or Morado, I think it's called sometimes too. Really nice. I'm really happy with that. I might, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to continue using that quite a bit. I also may have made them out of a Thai wood called Mairak, which is really nice. But that wood itself is almost impossible to get. 
but I have little bits and pieces. And that was for a guitar that I'm keeping myself. Anyway, and I've also used Bloodwood, and that worked out really well too. And um, yeah, one thing that's unique about this that you don't usually see on guitars at all is this slightly, un I think, unique way of doing the binding, right? You can see, I call it my Appaloosa guitar binding technique. Um, it's bloodwood and maple altered back and forth. So we can see it here. I've got a whole bunch of, how, how many do I have there? I kind of had one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven layers. And I kind of layered other layers on depending on where it was and stuff. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, I don't know what word to use. I love it actually. I have that on, on the guitar that I have to keep myself. Um, and then what, what I do to get this, this sort of Appaloosa modeled effect, Appaloosa is a kind of horse, if you don't know, is I'll just sand it down. Like, okay, so this was a layer of bloodwood layered over this maple. And then I would, so I just glued that in. And then I would just sand it down a bit. So, so it gets this kind of edge, you know. And sometimes that mean, meant I needed to sand the actual side down a bit to make it fit okay. Um, it's very minimal, so it doesn't affect the structure at all. But it makes it a little bit more, less... Uh, I like it because it's a little bit less... I don't know, I like the other one too. I like just the straight-ahead binding and purfling a lot, you know? Um, it makes it look a little less sort of machine-made. Not that my guitars look machine-made. Like, if you're used to handling guitars, you'll, you'll notice lots of aspects of it being a hand bent and handmade instrument, right? It's, it's not a cookie cutter at all. You, know, you can feel slight, like when I run my hand here, oh, I can feel slight shift in the, in the side, like it's not completely straight. I mean, it's, you know, a lot of people wouldn't notice it, but I can feel it, right? Oh, there's a little bit of a whoosh, whoosh, like a little whoosh there, etc., etc. Anyway, yeah, so I bend on a pipe and I, um, what am I saying? What am I trying to say here? And then I bend on a pipe, and then I don't use a mold, right? I just form it by hand and then put it into a Solera mold with kind of blocks, right? So I, I like, I'm going to keep working that way. It's tempting to go with like a big perfect mold, and eh, I'm not sure about that for me. Anyway, back to the less, less blabbing and making excuses. Um, on this guitar, I have uh, friction pegs. These are viola pegs. Um, I choose actually to make my head plate always with pegs so far, right? I love it. I don't really want to do your typical classical machine. However, not everyone wants friction pegs. <laughs> they can be a bit intimidating, I think, for some. But they work great, right? And I do think I do a pretty good job with the reaming and, and stuff, tapering and all that. Um, but on the other hand, I do make these so that you could install a, um, so, so that you could install a, uh, like the Whitner uh, geared pegs. They, they look very similar, but they have a gearing inside. So it's like a, I think the Whitners are eight to one ratio. There's another one called Peghead. So those can all be fitted in, fit in quite easily, I think. So I make it, I'm trying to make it so that that's how it'll work if someone changes their mind, right? And um, uh, I might make a guitar with them already in it and it costs a bit more money, right? It's like 200 bucks at least for those pegs, but anyway. Yeah, anyway, so enough of that. Back to the neck. Oh, the neck is Port Orford Cedar, which I really love working with. Um, I'm working on an another one right now. I'm using this the good old Spanish cedar. Dun, dun, dun. It's a little bit darker. You can see, even with it unfinished, you can see the tone is quite different. Um, but it's similar in weight, I think. Oh, this this uh, Spanish cedar feels a little lighter, but it's hard to tell with no you know, fingerboard on it and everything. But uh, yeah, anyway. So, back to the back. Here we've got the Red Mountain Cedar, which is the back and sides. It's really nice. Uh, I don't, it's it kind of you can see that the color it'll shift according to light. I'm not sure if I can get this on the camera if that will work, but 
in person when you move it around like how the grain shows up it will shift on you it's really nice and then I've got a bloodwood cap here and then bloodwood and maple center seam thing majigger yeah yeah um what else what else what else how about the back how the, how I've done the back seam there yeah, pretty straightforward. Sometimes I'll, like if it was this regular binding, I'd, I'd do something where it kind of does some sort of pattern there. But with this one, it's just straight. And you can see how it joins in with the back seam there. Pretty, it's right on the button there, I'd say. And with the back, I kind of, oops, I kind of, it's kind of cool the way this happened. Because the back, the back piece is kind of layer out more if that makes any sense so i ended up treating a bit differently so i ended up with a bit of a pattern there which is kind of cool yep anyway yeah right how oh, you guys a better play or something what else to say nothing really with the 18 hole bridges i like them a lot um they look great i love the way they look but you can also do your strings like you'd normally do on a on a eight on a six hole bridge. That'll work too, no problem. Okay, a little bit of a of a bit of a plain demo, but apparently it's a tuning demo. Tune with the pegs. Uh, there's not this other. There's really good. Oops, that's not really. No. Well, that's pretty good. Close enough for de demo. the best place for the mic. How about, let's try this. I've got the mic on me. Let's try it. Let's see what happens with this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, bumbling around. Anyway, I kind of like to be goofy on these videos, so I'm quite serious though. I'm a very serious guitar maker. <laughs> <laughs> shortened fingerboards like around instead of 650 which is kind of the normal size that I do it's around 624 point something or other um, yeah it's cool I like it um, but for my fingers and I've also narrowed it down a bit right so I have these big fingers and anyway, I think it hopefully it'll be really great for Carla because she wanted it scaled down also, my nails are short. I'm not, I only have one nail that I can get a good sound out of. So I'm kind of playing like with just the pads of my fingers. So there's a caveat for you right there.
sounded good. I mean, one thing, uh, people that are in guitars will know this. This is Spruce Top, right? Um, Spruce, Spruce Tops, they'll, they take time to uh, open up. And it's sounding really open already, I think, you know? <laughs> Piece. That's kind of a party piece that I'm working on, that I just played, and then this one too. Um, yeah, so the spruce tops, like your guitar change, it's really noticeable actually. It really changes over time, you know, and uh, months, over months, you know, like half a year. Like, uh, I have my guitar here that I've, this one I've had for almost a year now, and it's really change it's subtle but really cool and I have this theory that it changes according to the player right so I've been I've I've had strings on this since last week and I played a bit every day just to see where it's going right but it's really now it's really up to Carla to make it shift so ever so subtly but still shift to her own plane and her own body and all that stuff that's a, I love that, that aspect of it, you know? So it's a flamenco, so you can really hammer that and get that nice buzz going. <laughs> those fast runs, eh? I find. Man, anyway, whatever. I'm sure I'm looking for people to buy guitars, not to hire me as a guitarist. Well, you could if you wanted to.
Okay. Okay. Let's get right back up here. Oops, wrong way. Okay, yep. So, there you go. One guitar ready to go out. Ooh, look at that shine. It's pretty good. I mean, you know. Um, I, do the, I think I do a decent French polish finish. Yeah, anyway. It's funny, my own guitar, anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. My own guitar is like, <laughs> you don't really do a good finish, do you? Well, I do, but not on my own instruments. <laughs> Things you shouldn't say on a video where you're trying to get people to hire you. Anyway, yeah. Maybe my work will stand for itself. Okay, hope everyone's good. Thanks for checking in on this. Um, we'll be putting it on Facebook and YouTube and all that. And this instrument's going to be heading out... I don't know. If it's not raining Wednesday, I'll probably take it down, but uh, we'll see. Oh, you know what I should do? I should show you the case, actually. I got a, a new version of the V-Sit Nut cases. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. I had to step away there because my phone was full. <laughs> I was doing, did a hike today and did some videoing. So I, I have a 16 gigabyte for old iPhone, I guess, is what I got. I don't know, I guess it is an iPhone. I can see it right on the label. Anyway, so I had to ditch it. So I'm not rich like some people that can afford a 32 gigabyte phone. So there you go. Anyway, here's a Visit Nut case. Um, now this is the Active Series. It's a cheaper version, but cheaper, but still just as strong. It's really more about the surface and stuff. I have my own case. I have one of the premier ones, which is this beautiful bronze color, which they don't actually have right now, but they have some other great colors. And anyway, it's, it's, there's some hardware that's Kind of maybe you could say it's better, but this is a great case. You know? um, it's uh, owned by a guitar maker down in Bangkok, or in the Bangkok area, southern, mid central Thailand, um, called Naron Sak Visit Nut. And this is the case he made. So he wanted cases, he had a specific idea about guitar cases for high end guitars, right? And he was never happy with anything. So this is the cheaper, although they're not cheap in cases by any stretch. They're beautiful, great cases. Um, what's unique about them is they have an adjustment system right here. There's like this is a Velcro here, and you can adjust the uh, this this part comes in and out with that adjustment, right? So it'll fit a, a really wide number of guitars. Let's see if I can do this with just. Two hands. I'm trying to get me. You know what? I'm gonna have to stop it. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Here we got Carla's guitar. Um. You can see how. It, see, her her guitar is a small scale instrument, right? But look at that. It's snug in there. It's not going anywhere. You know. Beautiful. One thing that I had to do on this because of the shorter scale. There's a, the, new, the new cases, mine doesn't have this, mine's an earlier version. The new cases have this strap that go across the, uh, right there, across the neck. Um, but the other, it comes with it that wraps around, right? But because of the pegs and stuff there, it wouldn't, it doesn't really work without, it doesn't work well, you know what I mean? So what I did was I just trimmed that off and glued it down, and now it works just fine. So that was, that worked out really well. So it's good to know because, I don't think I'd go too much smaller on a guitar and fit this case. A little bit. I could go, gee, I don't know, maybe 620 or 610. You might make it. And this is quite soft here, so you could probably tweak it. But you don't want to tweak too much because you want it to function properly. Anyway, great cases, beautiful cases, right? Um, super strong. Um, you can see uh, this rubber ring. You see how it's... There's a bit that sticks up, and that fits right into that groove there. One thing that's really, I personally really appreciate about them is that they're quite airtight, which is great for things like humidity control and stuff. And if you're traveling and y you don't want temperatures and stuff to shift too much, right? And so the guitar in the case, will, the, the environment will be more stable. 
for a longer period of time. And it'll shift, of course, it just does. And the latches on these are really nice, actually. Um, the other latches kind of have a twisting mechanism. They're super secure, but these are great, too. And th there's, there's no lock, but there's a little, what do you call it? There's a little, yeah, you probably can't see that. Can you see there's a little hole right there? So you could slip a lock right through there. Like, it, you wouldn't just do one if you need to lock it, but... Um, these are flight cases. These, these you can put under this plane if you want to. But one of the things, this is a really great element. Watch how I flip that up, and then I can drop the, the I can drop the latch right down flat. See how that's flat like that? This is really great because when you pull your guitar out, there's no latch like sticky. Like some guitar cases, you'll flip it down, and the thing will be sticking here, and it's just asking for you to scratch the back on that. Damn, you know what I mean? Anyway, beautiful design. Uh, I love that it's a, a Thai company, of course. Um, and these may be the best cases. I think they're the best cases going from what I've seen. I've seen the BAM cases. And I had a Colton case on my Laskin. And my other, I had a really nice Japanese for my go-to when I was younger. And the Colton cases are great. They're very strong. They functioned really well, but they're heavy as hell. Like they're super heavy, right? These cases are not really light, really lightweight, but just as strong in my opinion. Yeah, so that's about it. Yeah, so that's about it. I did a guitar tour, a case tour. Do I need to do anything else? There it is sitting there. Carla, it'll be in, coming to you soon. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, hope. Oh, okay, that's better. Uh, hope everyone's great. Thanks for watching. It's probably going to be too long, but as usual, ciao. And, uh, Happy New Year. <laughs> like, four people wished me Happy New Year in the last two days here. It's like, well, because I'm for, like a foreigner, right? Probably thought I was American or something, but I'm not. Anyway, um,. But it's not New Year's yet. It's still a month away, but close to... Oh, no, it's not. What's a bloody date? Oh, it's halfway to New Year's. That's close enough. So everyone's going, so I need to be by. And, oh, so I need to be by. It's like, well, it's in a couple of weeks still, but good enough, okay? <laughs> anyway, so I need to be my... Bye-bye.